Good afternoon, YouTube. I have a um, video about the DR650 accessories. The last video, I didn't expect. I, I thought I would make a video that maybe did 400 views or something like that. Maybe just, you know, like a quick niche video. But uh, thanks to everybody that has been watching it because it's doing really well. Um, I feel like I certainly owe a... Uh, more in-depth explanation on uh, some of the accessories. And I did write a little bit of a cheat sheet shit right here. Um, but let's work from the front of the bike and then I'll try to make my way back. I uh, can't guarantee I'm gonna be 100% accurate on how I do that. But the first one, this gets the most questions. This right here. It's a parabellum windshield. So all of the parts that are currently on the bike, I will link in the description, but that is a parabellum tall windshield. Um, you'll see them on XR650, some of the smaller dual sports, but definitely on the DRs. Uh, you know parabellums do the rallies. I didn't want to bolt into this front piece right here, just above the headlight. Um, I didn't want to get into that too hard. I love this windshield. Uh, my wife got it for me. I'll tell you the drawback. Um, so when I do, I have not gone on any sort of trail rides yet. It's still a very new bike and it's my daily commuter, but you have to unbolt here and here. And it's not gonna set. Don't freak out if you're putting this thing on because the main goal, what I wanted to make sure was that I had it as even on that headlight as possible. One, to not lose light, and two, just for the aesthetic. But when you look at it and it's bolted in, you're not gonna get this like perfectly precise. It's, you see there's a, like, this will be a little bit off maybe, that'll be a little bit off, but you gotta have it look like that if you're gonna have it set in the bike the way that it needs to be to set straight. So I love this windshield, it keeps rain off of me. <laughs> Cause I'll go to work rain or shine doesn't matter and I love this kind of it gives like a um, like the CRF 300 rally or some of the other bikes I like how it contours back around like this but like I said in my last video I want this a chair bees five five three tank I think I called it a five six in the past but it's in a chair bees five three I don't know if when I turn this is going to bump it or not but anyway if you're looking for another tall one, you wanna keep the wind off, it's probably actually a better call. Uh, don't tell my wife I said that, because at the time I didn't know and I was the one who asked for this, but the Madstad, uh, the Madstad will take you up to 24 inches and I think it would set up just as high on the bike, maybe even a little bit higher. And what I might do, cause I'm 6'4", is just add like a little pewage, uh, a pewage, uh, whatever the hell you call it um just that extra little bit of height um but come summertime and we're damn close to it i'm probably just gonna do unbolts maybe off of the triple um i'm not sure i'm not sure where i'm gonna unbolt it but just for going on trails and stuff maybe even right here i'm just a little scared of bending these if i drop it um okay so let's go ahead and uh depart from that another thing i did i don't like metal on bikes if I don't have to put it on there. So I went with these Warp 9 plastics. The big concern I had, everybody knows this, the motor's air cooled. I thought I was gonna smell it burning. I'm not a, a genius when it comes to understanding that kind of shit with plastics and metal and heat and all that and tolerances, but this stuff, it did kind of smell funky a little bit, but it was like it was like it broke in and adjusted to the heat. I've never had an issue with it since i've had them on but that warp nine case cover super easy to put on and it looks better um i don't think those metal ones i think when you if you mix this kind of brushed look with that chrome look it just doesn't look right to me but this flat black i like that look a lot better and i'll show you what it looks like on the other side here this is a quick little gander and what's good about this and i'm about to do this a little bit later today, I'm doing a valve check. It's uh, 400 miles past due. It was past my 800 mile one, but you still have access here. It doesn't take away your access here. It doesn't take away access to your view to your top dead center either. Um, that's hugely important. Another thing, these foot pegs are attached to 
the uh, Wurtz wire back and down. Got them off ProCycle. Let's see if I can get you a better look in there. Try to get the camera focus on that. There it is. Okay, so it's a back and down. Like I said, I'm 6'4". And these are the IMS. Now, a big part of why you're seeing rust on that, it rains like crazy. I commute in the rain. It's hard to scrub. I don't really care because it's a solid, solid, durable chunk of metal. Another part of the rust is um, I'm not allowed to park it in the engine bay at work, which I wished I could, but hey, it's a dual sport. And uh, dual sports, as we all know, they weren't, uh, they weren't necessarily made to be pampered inside their whole life. Oh, let's go ahead and jump to this top rack. So when you go below here, what you're seeing right now is the GV mono lock system. Let's go ahead and jump before we talk about that rack because this is the mono lock. Make sure that you get mono lock, not mono key. If you get this, the E43 case, it's from Motostrom. It's only in Italy that you can get this particular case made for scooters, but it's only gonna fit on that mono lock. But just below that, I'm not gonna take it off. You can see the front of it and the product name it's the uh, Top Rack Precision Moto Series. That's what it is. Um, considered probably one of the cheaper ones cost-wise on ProCycle. And that's all I've done so far. But to make it uh, more of a substantial video, there's something I don't want to do because I've made this mistake in the past with a lot of bikes. You buy too much shit too fast and then you fall out of love with the bike, which I don't anticipate it happening, but I've done it before. But DG has an exhaust, or I'm sorry, a muffler that you can add on here, and it offsets the car, uh, the weight of the bike. Um, God, man, maybe I'm talking out of turn here, but uh, about 10 pounds. And uh, I wanna add that, and you can add you can either leave it without the silencer around 96 decibel, or you can add a silencer and it drops at six decibel. I want the bike more quiet, so I'm gonna make my bike more quiet. That's all a preference thing. And then this is another thing I love. Like I said, I'm not really doing the best job skipping back and front here. The Acherbys that does come on here, it's plastic and I can bend it. Get a little tap on my camera really quick so you can see it. I went for the Acherby skid plate, one for the weight, two, I've seen the bikes that are new. I saw a video of the Aprilia Torre, and I've seen some other videos where dual sport riders have cracked rocks friggin' hard, and they've actually shattered those plates. Um, I've seen them push into here on this lower frame and a lot of other things but this plastic because it is squeezable and moldable instead of redirecting the energy vertically back up towards it as it absorbs that energy pushes it horizontally throughout here so you're going to risk a lot less of that and i'd much rather take a gouge on a cheaper piece of plastic and um another guy he he has really brilliant videos and i'm really uh, a little bit embarrassed i can't remember the range road moto uh, it mentioned that he has actually seen trial riders prefer the uh, a chair beast plastic so that's it um, and that's everything I have on my bike right now now I have a wish list um, there's a couple things I never want to change uh, unless I have to my carb everyone says get that TM40 change this change that pull the snorkels and shit out of the airbox for me it's, it's not my thing um, Suzuki engineered that bike to go up to 12,000 feet elevation. I live at zero. And does it run hot? Will your pipe turn red? Yeah, but it's an air-cooled bike. It's not supposed to just be sitting there idling. So don't freak out when you see this shit getting hot. Uh, in fact, if you see it, it means you're not riding it. It means you're just sitting there idling and you're wasting gas. Um, it's just from it having to run lean for emissions. You don't need to change it. If you want to fatten it up with a jet, um, doesn't mean that I'm smarter than you because I didn't. Doesn't mean that anybody's smarter than anybody else. It's a preference thing, but that's my that's my my hot take. Um, 
now. Let's see, moving on. Uh, the uh, Polysport, a company called Polysport, makes a front fender for this, and it's just a lot cheaper, and it's not a big wind sail, and you don't have to worry about this, like right here. Look at that. I love this bike, but come on, Suzuki. 1996 we we got we should have had that one figured out by now um also another thing and i feel this immediately 6'4 235 pounds i feel this instantly it was the day i got the bike because because i was like oh hell yeah dual sport i want to go jump front forks i'm changing those bad boys out um i'm going with the cogent front springs not the progressive uh, i want to do the straight rate uh, the reason being is because the front progressive where it starts as progressive is at the factory rate and it doesn't change and it doesn't get heavy enough for what I feel my body weight on the bike would be. Um, could I have the pogo effect? Yeah. And if I do, I'll make a video about it. But um, I want to drop the, uh, the 0.70s in there. Uh, that's I think that's rated for like 265 to 300 wood gear. The back also it's a little bit different of a story though back there um so i'll keep let me get over here i can see it a little better oh there is that gold revalve kit that you can get um i'm already having to get to the point where i'll ask mechanics to do shit and they'll tell me stuff like and this is a luxury to be able to have somebody do something else on your bike but i've just been pushed off and pushed away by mechanics so many times they don't want to deal with it for whatever reasons um maybe they say their shop's busy i don't i don't know why mechanics almost act like they don't want to work on shit sometimes but i want to take this rear shock and i'm going to go to the 8.6 and do the gold valve shock race tech kit which is also pro cycle and you you know this this ad this this ad i should i should call it an ad this video is practically a fucking pro cycle ad, pardon my language. Um, but that is uh, something I want to do there. I think the 8.6 and I think the 70 in the front. I'm a big boy, a lanky one too at that. But I want something that's going to catch me when I, when I go down and um, coming off of a jump or something like that. And I think of my weight, I don't think I'm going to get as much pogo effect. Now, I think if you're about 200 pounds or less, I think you will get that pogo effect that they talk about. And I'm banking on that. Um, this was something I noticed. I was looking at this. And this sounds plastic. Uh, this, I want to go with the JNS K Saber. That little sprocket cover. I just want to get that. Plus, it's going to make cleaning the bike, cleaning the chain a little bit easier. And then um, there's only one thing else I want to change um, for certain. There's one consideration after that, but one thing, um, these hand guards. It's not that they're awful. I've actually rode to work in pretty cold weather, but do you see this, the wind? I mean, I can tighten that, yeah. And you can see they did it from the dealer. I haven't even really gotten to... Uh, mess with this from the dealership this was kind of wonky here already and that might be why it's slipping so easy it looks like they just didn't set that properly it looks like they were in a hurry i might actually be able to fix that in about two minutes but i want to go with hand guards i don't have a preference so anybody that wants to comment a preference they're more than welcome to um the tank what is it i said 3.4 it doesn't you know i get i did my average i get 52 miles per gallon um it just doesn't feel like it doesn't feel like it it doesn't feel like it's getting all 3.4 i would love to go to that a chair b5 3 i i'm add though man i don't want to have to turn my pet cock off every time i get off because you know what i'll do is i'll forget i have add um another person told me to do a delete here also but it's not giving me any problems um I I respect that they would say that, and they and, and they they said it for a good reason. They didn't say it like, oh man, what are you still doing with that? They they were a very nice person about it. They were they were just saying delete it. But um, it's it's not that I'm resistant to the idea of deleting it. 
it's a rubber hose, so I'm not afraid of that part cracking. I am a little bit nervous about this sticking out right here, but um, it's just not a priority at the moment. And you know, if you, <laughs> you total up that wish list, and it, it, it's going to be a minute before everything gets on here. But uh, yeah, don't anticipate me ripping snorkels and messing with this. I'll never make a video about that because I just I'm not there yet. Um, and I don't know. Uh, the delete here with this. Um, now I have had an issue where I was riding and I did have my bike shut off and I think I think that had something to do with it. Um, I might look into a delete on that, but listen, I appreciate, I would never anticipated that, that probably by the time most people are seeing this video, it'll be past 3000. I never anticipated that that many people would be interested in how I had this bike set up. I'm going to go ahead and link all these parts in the description. Um, I'll hold off on the wish list parts just because I'm not 100% sure yet. Uh, I, I, I don't want to like endorse something that I haven't owned yet, but I will endorse everything on this bike right now. I'm very happy with it. And uh, there is one more thing when it comes summertime, Mayor, it just looks like a kind of kind of bulky, but it's a nice little scoop right here to catch some more air on this oil cooler and keep it hot. It is hot where I live, and thank God I didn't get an XR650 because I could only imagine it being worse. But till the next video, and um, by the way, speaking of next videos, let me walk you over here. We got two bikes. This is the Weiss Trail 125. You'll be seeing something on that very soon. And then the next one, this little peach has been in my life for a long time. This is the uh, 2003 VS VRSA. Uh, anniversary edition so reviews on both of these coming uh i'm gonna try if i can my wife is she's she's much better at talking on camera than i am i might even have her do this one or at least do it with me um but till then i appreciate everyone i appreciate the comments the advice the time that you took to come and watch that review and if you have a DR650, I hope you enjoy. I hope you enjoy as much as I do. And like I said, any advice is welcome. Uh, share, comment, like, subscribe, and until the next video, take All care. All right. So typical me fashion, I do an accessories video, and I leave out the seat. <laughs> Not only do I leave out the seat, but I leave out these feeler gauges that I wanted to recommend. But this seat is the seat concepts um i want to talk about it one thing um some guys that are shorter i've had some commenters um i believe one person was five foot eight and um another i believe was five ten had a tough time touching the bottom um keep in mind this this bike if you're considering all these dual sports and these 300s and stuff i don't know about them but i know that this bike lowers from the factory um I think you can see it if you look down in here. Oh, it's it's gonna be really hard to get this shot. I'll try. Uh, let me see. You see that right here? Let me see if I can get my hand around there. If I'm about blind, it's about right below where my finger is. There's a, a hole right there. That is actually where you can lower it. Um, and also, I get the seat concepts carbon seat. It comes from ProCycle. I didn't go with the tall, and I am tall. Um, when this one wears out, I will go with the tall. Um, I'll probably keep that carbon look, but the point of me talking about the lowering thing is you lower this bike, you go on Pro Cycle, and you get the seat concepts low. And I think it drops in somewhere around here, in about two inches, maybe. Um, you'd have to talk to somebody who's actually put it on the bike, but. Remember the chain roller that I talked about in the last video for a dollar seventy-five or a dollar twenty-five on ProCycle um, saves me a trip to True Value, saves me thirty minutes of my life for an extra seventy-five cents. That is that chain roller guard. Um, the way that it was described to me was that even if that chain hits that chain roller too hard, puts a little tiny crack in your frame, now you've got water coming into your frame. So before where I was on the fence about one of these, I'm entirely sold on it. I don't care what a dealer tells me. 
I don't care if a dealer says that it got better or worse. You crack that thing sticking out above your chain and you put just the tiniest crack in your frame and get water damage in there, whole different problem. It may take years, but you're still gonna get it. Now, these other things, so I bought regular feeler gauges, but I watched that Dino's Tinker Shed video and you use these bent ones when you get this tank off and you see that position of how those valve covers are set, just go on ProCycle and save yourself a little bit of a pain in the ass. You'll get a much more accurate measurement. And uh, if you're like me, you're gonna set them things out to the max. I don't want them. Uh, I don't want them any closer than they need to be. Those little tappets. Um, I want them out to the max because I'm not going to check them again until the service manual says so and I don't want a reason to have to. I don't want them to get too close and float a valve, but I'll add these to the description too. So uh, pardon my forgetfulness and I hope everyone has a great day. Take care.